Hello, my friends. Do you like my little seahorse? Well, I'm going to show you how to paint it today. Um, I'm working on a paper called Yupo. Y-U-P-O. It's a Japanese paper made from plastic, and um, it's got a very slick surface. My, it's not even dry yet. It takes a long time to dry, and I used to love this surface and paint on it quite a bit, and I realized I hadn't used it in years, so I decided to, to uh, dig it out. Now, I had a little scare because the first piece I took out, this is what happened when I tried to paint on it. The paint was all beating up and I was like oh no because I have so much of this paper stored away and so I grabbed another piece and and it went fine and what I think was because it comes in such huge sheets what I do is I'll take a piece and I'll chop it down and I'll stick it in a uh, file folder and what I had done uh, that piece that I painted on originally was um was touching the um the back of the filing folder so I think that there may have been some oils or something just naturally in that paper that transferred and made it slick so hopefully we will also have good luck on this one so you can see it's kind of just it's very 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 smooth got a satin sheen to it it's very lightweight but this is was soaked it does not buckle because it's all plastic the water just stays on top so what I'm going to do first here is um, I'm just going to kind of go in right with the paint and uh, and start painting. Let me move this out of the way here so I don't get anything on it. Um, I think we'll do another seahorse again just because I just did one and I've got that on my brain. Got the seahorse on the brain. Um, you can use all sorts of water media on this and I've even used um, water soluble oil pastels and they've worked out um, pretty well. I'm going to use a round brush and I'm going to start off with some uh, cadmium yellow and I'll just do a little seahorse's snout here. Let's get the face and the swoop of the body. No curly tail. This is not really a painting technique as much as it is, you know, a trying this really cool paper technique. Um, and you can see that on this the paint, the paint is sticking, which is a relief. <laughs> say it's a relief because I was like oh no um all the I only uh, I only cut up one sheet of paper at a time it's such a big sheet it's like something like uh, 40 inches by 20 inches it's crazy it might even be bigger than that um so the rest of that's in a flat file in its original packaging um because I think I bought like a sheet of 100 because uh, there was when they were first kind of introducing it it's back in the oh, I think it was back in the 90s so I have had this for a while um you should be able to find this Maybe in an art supply store, but definitely at a website like Cheap Joe's or um, or something like that. I'm going to take a little Indian red. And I'm not making my paint as watery as I typically do when I am uh, when I am painting because you don't need much water. The, um, the paint is just going to flow. And um, so I'm not going to put any of the spiky details on yet. I'm going to paint in my background because I found that the Ink Tense pencils work really well when I went on top of the um, the dry, I'm sorry, when I went on top of the wet paper, the ink tents worked really well. But I don't want to get this green right next to my yellow or it's all going to just, if I touch the yellow with that, it's just all going to going to uh, swirl in together. Um, I'm using, is this, this is Thalo, actually I think it's either Thalo green or emerald green. Not 100% sure, but it's one of those um, Thalo based colors. Oh, I just see what I mean right there. Can you see that? How it's just kind of kind of spreading out. And if that happens, it's not a big deal at all because it's plastic. Honestly, you just wipe it right up. See? Easy as pie. In fact, I think I could probably take this piece and, you know, wash it off and it'll be fine. If you get fingerprints on it, it will repel the paint where you've got the fingerprints. So just keep that in mind. You just don't want to handle the paper any more than you have to. Or make sure you don't have any lotions on your hands if you're going to... If you're going to be working with this stuff, I'm going to grab a little. Uh, I think it's th it's either thalo blue or turquoise. Yeah, it's thalo blue. And I'm going to get some more of this juicy color in here. This is really really fun um, paint to to play with, just to kind of loosen up. And the other cool thing is as it dries, it does cool things. Like you could finish your painting, walk away, you know, go have some lunch or a cup of coffee or whatever, and you come back and it's completely different so it's totally fun it's kind of like uh, being a kid again in art class just slapping that paint around and it's really fun when you do it on a large scale um, if you use a lot of water it'll take a long time to dry this is one of those projects I do in the summer um, a lot where I had kind of nature on my side as far as 
the uh, sun and the heat to, to dry things. Okay, now I'm going to I'll wipe away to put like a little, maybe a little bit of coral or something. So I'm going to wipe that away. Back right back to the paper. So it's very, you know, liftable. And um, I can go in and paint that with a brush. Maybe I'll paint some with a brush and then I'll go in and add some with my uh, intense blocks. Now, the good thing about using the blocks is that I can go in and um, and it doesn't want to run so much when I have the blocks. So let me show you that. If I take this red here, I can woo, just go in there and kind of draw around. Look at that. Isn't that fun just to watch it go? Or maybe I'm just very easily amused. I'm not sure. <laughs> One or the other. Could be both, actually, I suppose. And they could dab it if I want to because it will really uh, grab those marks that I make. Some will um, feather out and some will stay right the way I left them. Maybe put some green grasses, some green aquatic plants in there too. Because this uh, the, the blocks almost act like a squeegee as well as color. Ooh, I like this. I didn't do this on the other one, but it's like the sea seahorse is just kind of Playing in the grasses. I always think of them as being playful, whimsical animals. Who knows? I have quite a crop of sea monkeys at the moment. Another uh, pet the children got that I've taken over. <laughs> I have incredible luck with sea monkeys. It's crazy. And actually, I just went to the Natural Living Center the other day and um, saw that they have Spironella. And because, um, like, if you order the sea monkey food, it's like it's insane. You have to pay like $8 to get a little tiny envelope size of a yeast packet of food from the Sea Monkey Company. Or you can go to the Natural Living Center and you can buy like a whole baggie full of spirinella for a couple, for like 82 cents or something. So I, uh, I got some of that and um, you actually can feed Sea Monkeys baking yeast and spirinella. And um, they love to snack on algae. So mine live in a window, in, on the windowsill in the living room and they have lots of algae that they take care of and Oh my gosh, probably a hundred in that tank. It's crazy. It's crazy. They, and they've been going for a couple of years. I have like the most incredible luck with sea monkeys or <laughs> maybe not luck because there's been times when I'm like, oh, I'm just so done with sea monkeys, but I can't, you know, I can't just, you know, let them perish. All right. So I'm just going to draw some details here on my monkey. I mean, my seahorse. <laughs> oh my gosh. I got monkeys on the brain. Little spiky bits. Isn't that fun? Oh, I think I want to use the yellow though. Let's get that one out. Just, it's just so fun. This, and look at that. Not a single ripple or buckle on this paper. Can you believe it? It's really, really fun. Now, if you want kind of like something in the middle, a paper that's not as um, slick as this that will absorb a bit, that you can actually get hybrid papers. At least you used to be able to. Strathmore Aquarius was a brand and it's partially um, it's partially synthetic and partially cotton or maybe even wool pulp, wood pulp. I'm not exactly sure if it's partially cotton or, or wood, but it uh, it's also thinner. It's smoother than your regular watercolor paper um, and you can um, you can do those techniques. Um, but you have more control like you would on a regular watercolor paper. But sometimes you just want to be a little wild. A little wild, you know, let it all hang out here doing this crazy, crazy painting business. Let's give this guy an eyeball. The ink tense is great because it kind of, you do have a little bit more control with these and I reckon you could use your watercolor pencils and I know you can use your water soluble oil pastel because I've done that before. And give me some little spots. Isn't that cool? Maybe I'm the only one impressed with it, but I'm awfully impressed with it. I'm having a grand old time and when your kids have a fun time with this. And the nice thing about this, if you get this, if you have some of this paper and your kids use it, if they don't like it, or if like, you know, they want to paint something else right away, this paper is not crazy expensive. It's probably, I think if you ordered it online, it's probably about $4 a sheet. I would think it was, it was less when I ordered it. Um, but that was, you know, over 10 years ago. Um, 
but you could what you could rinse it off wipe it off you could have this outside a painting station outside you could rinse it off every day when they're done with it in the summer or something like that so if it's not a masterpiece you know you could rinse it off and use it kind of like a well I wouldn't use it as a dry erase board because I think that oh, I don't think the dry erase would come off of it because it's it's got a like a satin um, sheen but you could totally you know use those um, you know that Ah, what am I what do I want to say it's like the same principle you can you know paint on it with watercolors or temperas and then um, wash it away when you're done um, and let's see you know something I haven't really done much with the ink tents is to use them as a cake of watercolor but I feel like I want to put a little bit more in a couple spots here I'm just using my number six synthetic round I like that it's got it's pretty soft but you do have it you can push the pigment around quite a bit um, on the other example I sprinkled some salt in but I didn't get the effect that I like that I usually get from regular paper so I don't think I'm gonna do that on this one and I think I also want maybe want to put a few grasses I'm gonna be covered with intense blocks with time I'm done here put a few right in front too so our little seahorse sea monkey hanging around in here. I could tell see my female and male sea monkeys apart now. The, uh, the males have whiskers and the females have egg sacs. And they can swim upside down or right side up. A little fun fact. So, oh my gosh, this is funny. I have to tell you this. <laughs> we were at, my husband and I, kids went over to my grandparents, uh, my, their grandparents, my parents, over school school break last week. And um, so I was coming back to town and, and so I called my husband so we could go have supper because, you know, we get the chance, the kids are gone, we, you know, we're living it up, we're going to go out to eat. And then afterwards, we decided we'd go and do a few groceries over at the natural, natural food store. And, um, and I had just bought some food, a, a new sea monkey tank because it was cheaper, honestly, to buy the new sea monkey tank with the food in it than it was to, you know, order that crazy $8 food um, online. And, um, so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna see if I can get some spirinella. And this poor stock boy, who I've already sent into the back room for a couple other things, um, <laughs> he comes out and he asks if he could help me. And I said, yes, you have any spirinella? And, um, meanwhile, I must, I must explain how I'm dressed. I have a hat that I made myself that I thought was very stylish, a scarf that I made myself that I also thought was very stylish, and a gorgeous purse that my, uh, girlfriend Kathy had made me. And, um, of course, none of them are exactly the same shade, but I'm a big believer in, you know, wear what you want to wear. Who cares if it matches? So my husband goes, I think you need to tell him what you need the spirinella for. <laughs> he goes, because you wearing that hat and that scarf and buying sea monkey food would just be hilarious. It's like, what are you talking about? I look stylish. <laughs> So what if they're not the same shades of blue? And plus, my purse is like, had like, you know, 25 different patterns of fabric on it, so, you know, it's gonna match something. So up here, where I have all this, like, I kinda like that, but I could bl uh, blot it off if I wanted to, but I like it, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, and there you have it. I, I really like this. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and I suppose, if I have a sponge around here, I could do a little dabbing. I know I do somewhere. Let me just do it right there. Oh yes, isn't this fascinating? I don't know where my sponge is. Ah, there's one. Found it! <laughs> Look at that! Okay, I'm gonna sponge on some stuff down there, I think. I'm actually gonna tear off a little bit of, a uh, little bit of sea sponge there and just sponge in. Well, let me just sponge it on the, uh, the paint the way it is right now and let's see how that looks. See what we get. We get a nice texture. See that? Okay, see right there, got a cool texture. And then if I want, I'll just pick up some color from my cake, maybe me my yellow. I could sponge on a little bit of that. So that's the cool thing about this too, you get a really cool texture. And I know they still make it. I just saw it advertised on one of the, uh, in one of my painting catalogs, so I'm not gonna be sending you on some crazy wild goose chase for a product that no longer exists like I have done in the past. You know, unbeknownst to me, tell you about some something fabri fabulous that I'm playing with that I've had for like 25 years and you can't find it. Um, yeah, I think that's probably done. And then you can see how quickly you can make a painting because you really don't want to, you don't want to overwork it or you're going to uh, lose the lovely spontaneity that you get. So there you go, 13 minutes and we have a painting. I think that's pretty good for a day's work. Um, if you have any questions on this, leave a comment below. I'll help you out. Um, I'll answer whatever. 
whatever you want to know if I can about this fun paper. It's called Yupo again, Y-U-P-O. And if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any other fabulous tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.